You're listening to Mountain Heartbeat with Joan Rosa Hopkins, proclaiming the gospel through word and through song. Hi, and welcome to Mountain Heartbeat. I'm Joe Hopkins. This week, Rosa has an interview with Jill Marquis. She is the mobile unit coordinator for the Charlotte, North Carolina Pregnancy Resource Center. And so today on our show, Mountain Heartbeat, we have with us Jill Marquis, and we thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Absolutely, and it's an honor for us. So I'd like to start with you just telling our listening audience what it is that you do. I am on staff with the Charlotte Pregnancy Resource Center. I have the privilege of serving as our mobile unit coordinator. We have two medical mobile units that go out to the busiest abortion clinics Um, in the Charlotte area, and they are staffed with a client advocate and a medical person, and not only do I serve on the units, but my job is to manage them. It can be anything from making sure that the maintenance things are taken care of to uh, seeing that the staff has everything they need in order to do their job well. So I, I wear several hats with that position. Yes, and so just walk us through what a typical day would look like. What do you, where do you position your mobile unit, and um, how how would it, a normal day look like to you? Um, a typical day is going to start for the team that's going out at about eight fifteen in the morning. They arrive at our center, make sure that the unit has everything that it needs. And they will typically take our larger unit. We have a 32-foot RV, and then we also have a Mercedes Sprinter. So the the big unit goes out to Charlotte's busiest abortion clinic at about 8.15 in the morning. They're set up about 100 yards from the entrance to that clinic. And um, the team is on the street by about 8.30, actively reaching out to women who are on their way to that clinic. And where this clinic is positioned on the street, the street makes a loop. And um, we know that about 90% of the traffic that passes by our mobile unit is headed to that clinic. So our team is actively reaching out. It's a smile and a wave to that car as she's approaching um, on the street. And so, you know, our, our hope, our prayer is that we can get her to stop and have the opportunity to speak with her for a few minutes before she continues down to the clinic. Um, if we have the opportunity to, to talk with her while she's in her car, you know, we'll say something like, um, Hey, my name's Jill. I work right here on this medical mobile unit. I assume you're headed to the clinic this morning. How did you confirm your pregnancy? And then we have the opportunity to just speak with her about what we offer her, which would be um, a medical-grade pregnancy test and an ultrasound, and the opportunity to speak with a medical professional about abortion procedures and about what she can expect um, you know, if she has that procedure. It gives our client advocate a few minutes to talk with her about the pressure that she's feeling and what's making her think that abortion is going to be the best option in her situation. And then it also gives us the opportunity to speak into that pressure and to let her know how we could help take that pressure off of her. And part of that conversation also includes um, talking about the fact that the child that she's carrying is made in the image of God. And we get the opportunity to to speak the truth in love to her, that this is not a clump of cells, that this is a baby, and that while maybe her circumstances appear dire in this moment, um, we we can come alongside her with material help, but we can also come alongside her with emotional and spiritual help. You know, our desire is to not um, see that life end and to not see her life continue on a path that's going to lead to a tremendous amount of heartache and brokenness. Right. And I, I can hear it. And I believe that anybody listening can hear the utmost compassion. It, it flies in the face of the stereotype that I, I do believe is media portrayed that um, those that stand outside abortion clinics are judgmental or uncaring. You can obviously sense the caring that, that you have for it. And I, I would assume your team as well, I would assume, because 
um, it's no easy task to set forth day after day. And I'm sure that you run into opposition and I'm sure that you run into difficulties. And um, so what are some of the, um, the the good results that you've seen, some of the stories mm. that, or the lives that you personally have touched in this way? Oh, my gosh. Um, it, it's so great that you're asking this question right now um, because I just had the opportunity to speak with two of the clients that I got to counsel on the unit um, last year in 2016 um gosh let me think for just a minute how to phrase this you know as as a woman who has chosen abortion herself i understand the pressure that the the clients that i speak to are facing and one of the things that i know is that while the elements of our stories are different they're really all the same. You know, her, her circumstances might be different than the circumstances I faced, but when we peel back all of the layers, um, we're making a decision based on fear and panic. Um, we're very afraid that life as I know it is going to change dramatically or the life that I want to live is not going to happen if I have this baby. Um, you know, there are just certain things that are true for every story when a woman is seeking abortion. So that being said, um, one of the clients that I, I just recently saw that I had the opportunity to counsel um, has had her baby. She had a little boy, and um, she actually had said to me, you know, the things that, that you said just resonated so deeply with me that I, I just couldn't go down to the clinic. I couldn't do it, um, which was very sweet. And, and I don't want anybody to think that it was what I said that changed her mind because I don't have that kind of power. That comes only from the Holy Spirit working in her life. But I know in talking with her and helping her to see past that moment of crisis that um, that would give her the opportunity to allow her to hear God's voice. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think what is so powerful that um, you're, you're in this position on the front line speaking into them is it's not based on theory or on secondhand information because you know you've been through it, you've lived it. Would you mind sharing your testimony with our listeners, um, what what happened in your own life? What did you experience, and um, how did how did God turn that around to use that for good? Thank you for joining us this week on Mountain Heartbeat. That's all the time we have for this interview. But you can hear the rest of this interview with Joel Marquis next week, on the same channel, same time. In the meantime, I would encourage you to check out Jill's blog at desperateforgrace.com. You can also go to joeandrosahopkins.com and check out this and other fine programs. We're also on SoundCloud and YouTube. You can search for Joe and Rosa Hopkins. If you'd like to check out Rosa's blog, it's at lifeinsidethehouseontherock.com. And if you go to that website or Joe and Rosa Hopkins, you can find our contacts page. If you'd like to contact us about playing a, a hymn sing or playing at your church, we'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, we'd like to play you a song off of our album, Salvation Songs. It's called Call Unto Him. Jesus is the one who saves the blind man from his sins. He is the one who really dwells within me. If you need salvation and forgiveness of your sins,
within me If you need salvation And forgiveness of your sins Call out to Him 